What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Copart walk around over here at Auto Auction Rebuild. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to watch this video today, and a big shout out to Copart for allowing me to come out here during these difficult times. Let's get started. Number one on my list is a 2018 BMW 740. I believe this is an XI. We'll find out in just a second. We'll go around the back and see what the badges say. 15,566 miles on the odometer. Definitely some rear end damage. I haven't seen what the damage is yet. This was on like Copart's email of their like highlighted vehicles. And I was like, yeah, we got to see this one. We got to see this one. Does it look that bad to you? Doesn't look bad to me at all. Not at all. This, <laughs> this thing actually looks to be in great shape, doesn't it? Wow. Okay. Big grills though, man. My goodness. What is with that ginormous grill? That thing is huge. I mean, it's a big car, but in my opinion, that grill is not proportioned. <laughs> Ooh, wow, it's dirty. Very, very dirty. 15,000 miles. Maybe it had the windows down or something. It looks like it's got some body parts inside too. At least they wrapped everything up though. Oh, it's got some new parts. These are parts that are in the boxes still. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm not going to open it up to see what's in it, but there's lots of parts in here. It looks like we still got the, uh, is that a muffler down there? Or what is that? Or is this whole thing a muffler? It's a 740i X-Drive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let's see if we can take a, a peek underneath and see if there's something going on under here. Well, the exhaust is trashed. So it's got like undercarriage damage. Look how bent and distorted that exhaust pipe is. Hopefully I can get you in there. Look at that. That is, uh, that is rough. That's bizarre. That's, what do you guys think? I don't know, man. That's a little, uh, that's a little weird. Maybe they, I mean, how do you do that? You just back up like extremely hard over something? So this is a run and drive. Should we fire it up with no mufflers? I think we should, especially with no mufflers. Let's see what it looks like under the hood here. And then, uh, let's see if we can fire this one up. Twin power turbo. Gotta love it, right? Okay, now, for real, let's fire this thing up, see what it sounds like without a muffler on it. Looks like we got our jump points right here, positive, and you can hook your negative right there. We should be good to go. All right, we got our boost pack hooked up here, and the car has come to life. Now, see what old girl sounds like. Man, I love these, uh, I love these digital clusters. Remote control is missing. No! Oh! No! No, no! Where is it? It's listed as a run and drive. You're kidding me. I don't see it. What is this? No? <laughs> I have no idea where it would be in here. That sucks. I don't see it anywhere. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's listed as a run and drive, so that sucks. That really sucks. I went through all the trouble of digging out the booster pack and hooking everything up for nothing. <sighs> Come on, man. Just start for me. Magically find the damn keys. Remote control is missing. Hold remote to steering column. Okay, well, either uh, it could be it could be that they kept the, the remote control inside uh, the office because I'm sure this is an expensive key to replace. So they may have just simply taken the key inside to protect it from being stolen. Or I mean, there's the other possibility that somebody came out here and stole the key. Um, either way, we're not gonna be looking at this one, at least not hearing it running today. Next on my list is a 2007 Audi A8L flood car obviously sitting on the ground we got some front end damage the window is down you guys know i love flood cars uh you know everybody has like their thing and my thing 
is flood cars. All right, that's just, I, I don't buy them very often. They are a little risky. This is the 4.2 Quattro. Looks like the other side is closed up, so we'll have to come in through here. Let's take a, oh, you can see the water still standing in here. Ooh, yeah. Well, that's fun. Oh, this may have been a real flood car, guys. Like, sometimes flood cars ain't that bad. You know, sometimes it's really, it's really not that bad. Let's see if we can find the hood release down here. Yeah, I think this one may have been a bad one. <laughs> Let's see if we can check fluids and uh, find out if it at least cranks over or if it's like dead as a doornail. It'd be nice if this intake box just popped open, wouldn't it? Nope, it doesn't. It's screwed shut, so we can't check the air filter. Coolant looks good. Let's see what the oil looks like. Oil is actually low, but it doesn't have any milkshake. It doesn't look like water at all. Okay, good enough for me. What do you say we attempt to fire this up? You know what I hate about Audis is it, it, it's so difficult on most of these to find a jump point for a booster pack without getting in the trunk. And sometimes I hide them under here, but this is this is nice and sealed. So we're not going to be taking that off. Fun. Um, huh. Anybody know where a jump point on an 07 Audi A8 is? Anybody? Because I don't. And that could be a reason why this thing is sitting here listed as a non-runner. It might run, but the, the battery's in the trunk. And if you can't get into it, and it's electronic. Wait. Oh. Oh. We're so close. If we can just get into the trunk. Let me see if I can figure this out. So unfortunately, as it is typical with Audis, there's no jump spot that I could find under the hood. The battery is in the trunk and the trunk doesn't want to open. The key is stuck in the ignition. Um, now you can get the key out of the ignition if you have a paperclip. So for now, we'll probably have to come back to this car. If I find a paperclip, uh, then we could come back and try to open the trunk with the key, at which point we might actually be able uh, to get this thing fired up. So with Audis, one of the things I really like about Audis out here at Copart is you can't get into the trunk when the battery's dead. Okay, so this leaves these cars sitting here as non-runners when they could potentially run. I don't want to give too many of my secrets away out here, but uh, nine times out of ten, these cars are going to be dead as a doornail out here. And when they die, they die with the key stuck in the ignition. So I don't want to sit in here really, but as you can see right here, the, uh, the key is in the ignition and it's not tied up to the zip tie. Okay. The key is sitting here all by itself and you, you can't get it out. Now I'm not going to tell you specifically how to get the key out, but if you have a paper clip and you know what the, what the procedure is, this key will come right out. Now, once that key comes out, you can then come back to the trunk and you can stick the key in the trunk and it should mechanically pop open using the key. At that point, you can hook up your booster pack and the car will either turn over. I mean, at least you get a better idea of what you're getting. Either the car is gonna turn over or it's gonna start. Who knows, you may find out it actually runs just fine, but uh, we'll have to see if we can find a way of getting that key out and that relies on me finding a paper clip. Next on my list is a 2006, I believe, Audi A4. This is the little 1.8 turbo. This is a one and uh, run and drive, a one and drive, a run and drive. We've got damage that I didn't see in the pictures, but you could definitely see it in person. Hopefully you guys could see it on camera. Damage right here. This is a Quattro. It's got good looking tires. The body is not bad. Looks like it took a little bump there at some point that was repaired. The top actually looks to be in good shape. This side looks really, really good. Look at that top. That top actually looks really, really nice. Not a bad looking car, not at all. See what the interior looks like. Hey, it's got power. That's unusual for an Audi, guys. Trust me, it's really unusual. Oh, miles are 127, 215. And it looks like this thing, this thing might actually fire up for us, guys. 
Oh, well, it'd help if the thing wasn't stuck. There we go. Let's try it now. Oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ooh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> that didn't sound good at all, but it sounds fine now. Yeah, it actually, it sounds real good. Let's put it in gear. That's interesting. The uh, park reverse neutral drive is flashing. Hmm. It goes into gear, but that's concerning. That could be an issue with a computer, one of the modules. It could be an issue with the transmission. It could very well be saying the transmission is in limp mode. I would almost guarantee the transmission is going to be in limp mode with that flashing like that. I could be wrong. Any of you Audi people out there, go ahead and comment below, as I'm sure you will. I don't want to try the top, but we will try a couple windows. Yeah. All right, good deal. Windows work. And what if we pop the trunk here? The trunk does not work. No. Let's try it from the outside. Check engine light is on. The convertible top light is flashing. The park reverse neutral drive lights are flashing. And I know for a lot of you, you're probably like, oh my God, you know. Believe it or not, this is quite normal for an Audi. Yeah, the trunk does not want to open. Uh, quite normal for an Audi. If you remember back in the day on the channel, I had an A4 on here as well. And we had lots of problems. And it was down under here, was flooded with, uh, with water. And it had rusted out the what they call the comfort control module in these cars and when that happens well you got to find another comfort control module and when you do find them they're not particularly cheap and they're not exactly easy to find either so for that reason because i've already dealt with this and experienced this i am going to walk away from the little a4 next we have a 2019 nissan frontier beautiful truck with like 13,000 miles on the odometer what is this doing here let's take a look at the interior no bags deployed it looks nice right let's take a look at the back cute little jump seats okay so far so good so what could possibly be wrong with it well here we go frame damage and the bed is trashed and look if you want to know how much a bed for one of these is going to cost take a look at this four thousand and twenty five dollars just for the bed now obviously there is frame damage here let's take a look and see what it is oh wow boy i hope this comes out as good on camera as it's coming out for me right now i'm going to bring you guys in here just a little bit look at that so there's there's your frame rail and it just whoosh, straight down you can see the spare tire carrier and everything back here is all bent down as well there is a lot of damage on this one guys a lot of damage on this one now there's multiple ways of fixing this you could put another frame on it and another bed you could if you really wanted to you could attempt to straighten that frame or section it cut the bent piece off weld a straight piece on put a new bed on it but even after you do that you still have this problem right here the bed has gone into the cab so you've actually damaged the cab back here hopefully you can see where the bed is like the bed is not just shoved i mean the bed is it's way in here it's actually into this door so i won't even attempt to open this door because this door is going to hit the uh hit the bed and damage the door Thirteen thousand four hundred seventy-three miles guys that took a hard hit in the back it's got lights though so we might as well see if she fires up i'm sure she will there you go yes sir let's turn that off let's turn that off come on nissan Jeez, trying to get me demonetized man i'm not gonna lie it's a cute little truck it's a little on the dirty side there's what looks like tobacco and dog hair everywhere and manual windows boy that's that's not something you see very often anymore manual windows 
Okay. I had no idea they still offered manual windows. I mean, if nothing else, the rest of the truck is good. It's a good parts truck. As for the rear end back here, it's just, yeah, no wonder it's totaled. Hey, but you know what? Maybe you would have no problem leaving the, the cab damaged the way it is, you know? Kind of out of sight, out of mind. You, put, you section the frame, put a new bed on it, get everything fixed under there it needs fixed. Who's really gonna notice? You know what I mean? As long as this door still opens and you can see this gap gets real tight. It's loose up here. Then as we get down, that gap just gets tighter and tighter. So I don't know. I bet this is all aluminum too. I could be wrong. Do I see rust? Yeah, well, okay, so scratch that. Either way, guys, comment below, what would you do? Would you use it as a parts truck? Or would you section the frame, fix it, and leave the cab as is and just drive the damn thing? Next is a 2003 Infiniti i35. It is a salvage title. It's got a little bit of damage to the front. This is, this is one of the things I tried to, to tell you guys a lot about. For, for newcomers who haven't seen these videos before, an older car can be salvaged from literally a fender. It can be nothing more than a fender. Now, don't get me wrong, this car's got 280, it says it's got 283,000 miles on the odometer. That could be part of it too. So we're gonna look right here and we can see the wheel is broken, or not the, sorry, the tire is, is busted right there. Hopefully you can see that split right down the side. So it took an impact right here. There may be suspension damage that you can't see. But as far as body damage, you've got a cracked light and a scraped up fender that's got a few little dings and dents. This is an old car, okay? Chances are there's gonna be some minor suspension damage down there. It doesn't look like it took a really hard hit at all. This is an easy fix, okay? For somebody that just wants something to get around or something for their kid to get around in, something cheap that's decent, this could be it. This is gonna have your classic Nissan 3.5 liter V6 in it. They're good solid motors, good solid transmissions. It doesn't look bad. The body looks good. It's got a few dings and dents here and there. The rest of the car, well, it's gonna need tires. Definitely needs tires. The front tire over here doesn't look good at all. But minor damage over here, you could just leave this, fix the suspension damage, leave the, the fender damage. Nobody's gonna care about a little ding to the fender. And with 285,000 miles, if that's correct, wow. Okay, the interior held up like a true Nissan. Uh, it's, <laughs> hey, if this car has got 300,000 miles on it, you can't fault uh, the quality, all right? It was bound to happen. So let's put the key in it and let's see if she does anything. I see no lights on inside, so I'm fairly certain it's not going to do anything. Nope, nope, cracking wood. Let's take a peek under the hood then, because you know what it's time for. Now this is not one you're gonna drive out of here. I mean, I guess you could, but I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend driving this out of here with, oh, wow. Wow, oh my. Okay, so whoever, whoever owned it kept an Infinity battery in it but the engine looks like it's been leaking oil for at least 150,000 miles. Look at this. I mean, this is, this is pretty bad. It's, pre it's pretty bad, but it's got newer struts. So somebody took the time to put struts in it. It had to be taken care of to have the kind of miles on it that it's got. But boy, does it need valve cover gaskets. <laughs> You guys want to start it? I'm, I'm dying to hear it run. Let's start it up. I don't know about you, but I am dying to see if this thing really has 283,000. Well, this has 203. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Well. <laughs> She's got some issues, that's for sure. Brake lights on, the speedometer is under the zero, and the tachometer doesn't work at all. I would be willing to bet the check engine light is burned out. Let's turn this off, check that again. I didn't see a check engine light. No, nah, check engine light's burned out. Oh, uh-oh. 
There she goes. Yeah, guys. Uh-uh. Nah. The brakes feel fine. Put it in gear. Oh, it went right into gear. No issue with that. None. Straight into gear. Yeah, as far as me being interested in this one, I don't even need to look at it anymore, guys. Nothing wrong with it. It's not a bad car, but it's not something that I'm looking for personally. You know what I mean? This is, uh, just got too many miles. And, uh, yeah, it's weird. It says 283. The odometer says 200. I don't know what's going on with that. But it sure does look like it's got 283,000 miles under the hood here. I mean, this is just... I've seen plenty of Nissans with 200,000 miles and they didn't look this greasy. And that's the main thing right there. That paired with the uh, uh, tack not working, speedometer not working, the check engine light not coming on when I'm sure the check engine light is on. Uh, yeah, this thing's going to have some problems. Just more work than I'm willing to get into at this point. Moving on to the next one. Now, some of you may remember this 1990 Buick Riviera. We've shown this before in a previous video and it's still here. And so many of you were like, Randy, this is like your wheelhouse. This is it. GM with 56,000 miles on the odometer. Why wouldn't you buy this? Oh, the truth of the matter is I want to buy it. I would love to buy it. <sighs> the issue is this. And it's not just because it's wrecked that's the problem for me, guys. The problem is finding parts for this car is not as easy as you might think it would be i already looked i checked my local salvage yards i called a few places and only we were only able to find i think maybe i found a hood for it and that was pretty much it now, this car has got more issues than the hood guys the whole front end is gone i mean the lights gone the core support's gone the, the bumper's trashed, the fender's trashed, the hood is trashed, and then worse than that, as you get down here to the fender apron, right, and you can see, surely you can see on video how tweaked that apron is, right? I mean, just, just look at it. It's, it's been up here, it's pushed down here, bolt holes are ripped apart here. Now, that's not to say that somebody that's good with metal couldn't straighten that out and make it work. It probably could. In fact, I know somebody that could probably do that no issue at all, Mr. Mike from Weird Beard on YouTube. But at the same time, you know, Mike has his own life. He has his own channel that he's dealing with, and he may not have the time to do something like this. And again, even if he does, we still run into the same problem of finding the rest of the body parts. I couldn't find everything i needed locally to put this car back together and that means we're going to have to source stuff from out of state which either means shipping or a lot of gas going to pick it up and at that point with the purchase price of the car it just becomes not worth it and next on my list it looks like sam cracks honda ridgeline this is an 06 honda ridgeline 194,000 miles on the odometer it's not a bad looking truck really it's not I mean, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like the Ridgeline. I never have. To me, it is not a truck. It looks like a truck, but it's not a truck. It, 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 the, the, the lines, man, like the roof line coming down to the bed, very, very awkward. <laughs> very awkward. Uh, yeah. Now, I know I'm going to aggravate some of you with, with saying something like that. A lot of you Honda people are going to be really upset. But that's just my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. To me, it's it's just... Uh, it's awkward looking. It, <laughs> it tries to be a truck, but it's really not a truck. Okay? Um, limited space back here to do anything. It's, it's, it's not very deep at all. Like, this is... I don't... No. No. Can't do it, man. But... If you're looking for a big Honda Accord, hey, this will do the trick. This will do the trick. Let's take a look at the interior, see if it's going to start up. It's got good tires, a lot of miles, but at the same time, it is a Honda. I will give it that. All right, I'll give it. Oh, you you got to be kidding me. Someone put John Deere all over the steering wheel. No, sir. No, sir. This is not a truck. Oh, 
Dead as a doornail. Okay, so I guess we get to take a peek under the hood real quick and we will put a, a battery, a jump start on it, I mean. What is wrong with this truck? It's weird to see it just kind of sit here. I don't see anything that makes me think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, okay, here we go. I mean, I'll give it this. Lots of room to work under here. Lots of room to work. Batteries replaced 914 of 19. Five-year warranty. So they, they got a Everstart Max battery on it. Everything under here looks pretty good. It's a little damp. There's a little oil seepage here and there. But, uh... Look, in all seriousness, although I may not particularly care for the styling of the Ridgeline, transmission fluid actually looks very, very clean. Um, it's, a, it's a Honda, and that's, that's just that, man. At the end of the day, you can't, you can't really dispute that. It's a Honda. These are generally very reliable vehicles. Let's put a jump on it and see what it sounds like. All right, here we go. That booster pack is phenomenal, by the way. I have a link to that down in the description in the comment section guys i can't recommend that booster pack enough you won't find one tougher hey all right i mean i i wish i could say i'm impressed it runs phenomenal it really does brakes are solid goes backward goes forward just like a Honda that's the thing man Unfor and I think it's unfortunate um, let me tell you why I think it's unfortunate that it runs so well it's a Honda and it's expected to you know it has become expected for a Honda to be reliable to run and drive reliably with minimal issues so when it does nobody's impressed anymore they're like all they say is oh, it's a Honda it's a Honda. It's supposed to. That's what it's supposed to do. And if by chance it breaks down, right? <laughs> if a Honda breaks, people are up in arms over it. It's like, it's a Honda. These don't break. Well, they do. They do. It doesn't happen nearly as often as uh, some other manufacturers out there. I'm not going to call out any names and I'm not, I'm not mad about any particular one brand or anything like that. Uh, anyway, it's a Honda, and you expect them to just run and be reliable. And I'll tell you what, for the most part, they are. Now, that's not to say this doesn't have a problem. Who knows? Who knows? It could have a slightly leaking head gasket. It could have a bad transmission. And there's no telling. Or it probably will run and drive out of here just fine, and you'll have minimal issues with it. Now, I do notice that it's got an uh, air conditioning system, contains R134 fluorescent leak detection die in 2013. So in 2013... I mean, I know it was a long time ago, but it's worth noticing. You know, it obviously had some dye put in it, and you know, I don't know if they replaced anything. I don't think I don't see any other stickers under here. But let's try out the air conditioning to see if it works, or if it's one of those things that they just decided, you know, to hell with it. AC is on low. Let's turn the mode on to vent. AC is off. There we go. AC is on. What do you guys think? You think the AC is going to work? I'm, instead of waiting for it to get cold, I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to go over here and look at the compressor and see if the clutch is spinning. And it is. I don't know. You probably can't see it, but way at the bottom down there, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it. The clutch is spinning. That doesn't mean the AC is going to be cold, by the way. If you've got a clogged up... Oh, yeah, it's cold. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. It runs. It runs quiet. It's got cold AC. I'm going to turn that off because it's not particularly warm today anyway. Put it in gear one more time. I don't see any check engine light. I'm going to shut it off. Turn the ignition on and look for a light. There it is. Check engine light is right there in that corner, so I know where it's at, and it does work. This is a good running truck. It's a really good running truck. What do you think, guys? I think it's worth keeping on the list. All right. A good, old, reliable Honda. Last on the list, we got a 2018 Chevy Colorado Z71. 
I haven't seen the back end yet, but so far it's a beautiful truck, so I'm assuming something in the back has been crunched. 34,000 miles on the odometer. It doesn't look like it. Hold on. It looks good. It looks good. Wait. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. Man. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm not even... I, I know sometimes I fool with you guys and I tease with you guys and cut up and stuff, but I'm serious. I didn't see the pictures. I, I was in a hurry going through, as I always am, and I didn't see this. I really thought for a minute this thing was just here, maybe some minimal damage or something, but um, no, that's... Wow, look at... I mean... Wow, look at that frame rail, guys. I hope you can see that. I really do. I mean, that is, uh... <laughs> She's done, man. She is done. But, again, you know, the thing is, because these are such, like, a short wheelbase type truck, the problem is, is when the frame rail bends like this, it has a tendency to bend either right before or right after where your leaf springs bolt up. So that makes sectioning out the frame a little difficult. But I guess you'd have to replace all of this and you would section it further back there. Now this side of the frame looks like it came out all right. This side looks good. So could it be done? Yeah, yeah, this one could be done. But again, man, the cost of these beds they're insane these days. These beds are not cheap. And then you still run into the same problem, just like you do on most of these trucks. You know, the cab. The cab is damaged. You can replace the, the bed. You can section the frame. But when you're done, you still got to deal with this or, or not. The gaps look like they're okay. They're not great. But it, it still opens and closes freely. If you could deal with that and you could do most of this work yourself or you know somebody that could do it for you for a reasonable price yeah you can put this thing back on the road it's a nice truck i'm not gonna lie i it's it's a really nice little truck i like it and if you can get it all in all said and done for around half of what one at a dealership would cost you hey you know why not but also keep in mind that salvage vehicles typically don't carry their warranty anymore that's another thing to, to be informed about is, uh, you know, you may get it for half price, but airbag, uh-oh. So there's something else that's going to need money thrown at it. It's probably the, the seatbelt tensioner. It is. You can see the seatbelt's loose. Pre-tensioner on that side is shot. What about this side? Oh, this side is locked up. So seatbelts are trashed as well. You know, you're going to lose, you're going to lose your warranty. And you've got to put all the time and money into it to repair it. So, you know, not always is a salvage car a good deal, but there's plenty of times when a salvage car is actually a great deal. It's got 36,000 miles on it, so I don't, I don't foresee there being any, like, real issues. Well, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? It's a newer Chevy. <laughs> Never mind. Probably stay away from this one. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, kind of, sort of, not really, but well, there she is, a nice little direct injection V6, boy, you can hear that thing just ticking away, those injectors, yeah, all right, it's a decent looking truck, however, you guys know me. I'm not interested in this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this Copart walk around. I want to give a big shout out and special thank you to Copart for allowing me to come out here and do this. Really means a lot to me. And thank you to all of you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Hey, if you enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. Button, button, button. I, <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but it actually is. If you hit that thumbs up button, it really helps the YouTube algorithm to know that people like my video and they're going to share it with others. So it helps expose me to more new people that haven't seen my videos before. So all you got to do is take two seconds, hit the thumbs up button. I truly appreciate it. Consider subscribing to the channel and click that bell icon if you want to stay up to date on more future videos and get notifications when they come out. And with that, I hope you are all safe happy and doing your thing. 
I'm going to get out of here because I have to go sign a lease on the house and get the keys to my new place today. So until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.